However, in religion, when the assumptions are based on an infinite reference point, the assumptions become prophecy. And that's where sometimes we have to be, oops, what happened? Can you turn that one, please? That's where when we, when we look at assumptions, we have to be careful not to con con confuse them with prophecy. And so as we're looking at, there's two kinds of assumptions we make when they're based on the, under infinite reference points. The first assumption that we look at is one in which that this infinite reference point is an impersonal reference point. In the religions of the East, even when you begin with many, many gods, for example, in one religion is at least 350 million gods. Even when you have so many gods, if you look carefully behind those gods, there's always one reference point. Anyone knows what that symbol stands for? Om. Um, what is Om? Um? Exactly. It's a syllable. It's a sound. It's not a person. So really they're saying that everything, behind all of everything is one thing. And even behind that one thing is, in, is a, something that um, cannot be manifested, something that's non-existent. And then in this impersonal reference point, that we look at it, it, they find that it projects all the patterns that you need in order to understand the universe. And these patterns, they give meaning to the particulars in life, the, the situations that happen in life, such as the situations in your past, the situations in your present, present, and the situations in your future. In the Far East, in terms of Buddhism, one of the symbols of that impersonal reference point is this symbol right here. What is this symbol? Yeah. Yeah. How many parts is there to this symbol? I mean, do I hear four? Do I hear five? Do I hear two? We'd all be right, because when you look at the symbol, if you count the white and the black part, that's two. The dots, that makes it four. And the circle itself makes it five. But in the end, it's not really five, four, two, or one. It's really none, because the white dot is not really there, and the black is not really there. They merge into the same. And really, there is no beginning, and there is no ending to this image. So it's a symbol that everything becomes the other, and therefore no, it's, it's one thing, but nothing in particular. And as this, as, as many religions that go by this, every beginning is really an ending. So the cycle of birth and rebirth, let's say, for example, you're living and you die, but at the moment you die, you are reborn. So that makes death and birth the same thing. And that means it's neither birth, and it's neither death. So in that sense, you really cannot talk about eschatology in the way that we talk about it in the West, because in the West, when you think about eschatology, we're talking about an infinite, an infinite reference point, which is really a personal reference point. And this personal reference point actually has began a process of time, which we call creation. In Judaism, it's the Garden of Eden, as well as it's the same for Christianity and Islam. In this format, there is a different sense of fear and the other format I gave you, the sense of fear is of, not, of being stuck in the cycle, of constantly getting reborn and dying. You can, if you're an optimist, you call it birth and rebirth. If you're a pessimist, you call it death and re-death. Who wants to be stuck in death, re-death, death? And that's your biggest fear. And in the cycle of death, re-death, you might come back as something you don't want, and you fear that. But in 